great, uh, for me, it's a great honour running the theatre that he founded. And so I'm constantly reminded uh, of what he meant by collaboration. But most of you probably know him more as a poet. But what is truly astonishing about our laureate is that he was cross-disciplinarian, or what we might call a mixed-media artist. Now, what does that mean? Well, it can mean everything, but I think it means that as an artist, he was open to impulses and suggestions from all kinds of sources. Dreams, of course, the occult, astrology, nature, politics, sex, love, sex, politics, <laughs> geography. And depending on his point of view, he would channel this either through poetry or theatre or other forms of writing. Sometimes it would be a solitary singular journey of a poet, crafting a poet, a poem. Other times he'd work with a set designer, painter, dancer, an actor, a musician, or indeed maybe all of those together. And that was what was unique about him, is that as he opened, and he was extraordinarily open, you know, and that, that in a sense is the definition of an artist is that an artist needs to be so vulnerable and so open to all kinds of suggestions. Some of them are very literal suggestions, some of them are very visual suggestions, but other times it's the subconscious. And the challenge for an artist, no matter what happens, is to try and find a media, uh, and we see some of that here today, whether it's painting, acrylic, uh, whether it's found objects, whether it's writing, whether it's video. Really, those decisions are elemental and intrinsic to the work and how to get that idea into a form that suits the idea. I don't believe any artist necessarily starts with the form. Some do, but Yeats understood that. Yeats understood well, it could be a play, uh, it could be a piece of writing, it could be a poem, but he also celebrated that with other, other artists. And he, and he was very comfortable working with other artists, and that's something that, that, uh, that I admire. But, so I want to wish uh, to acknowledge and applaud Sligo for establishing and celebrating uh, Yeats Day and inviting all citizens to come to Yeats in their own singular, solitary way or as a community, whatever suits. What we have this evening is a gathering, a community of international, restless artists <coughs> who collectively have responded to the work of Yeats. It is a cultural exchange facilitated by Newell Clark and inhabited in this room by thoughts and ideas emanating from the US, from France, and Sligo, and Mayo, and Neutral, and all other counties around. And it's a perfect gathering in the year of the gathering. What I, I admire about the exhibition is that it's not literal. It doesn't obviously <coughs> make a connection with Yeats. And he would have hated that if it was that obvious. What we are witnessing is alchemy and magic and a heartfelt response to Yeats by creating originality, by creating culture, and by celebrating collaboration. I know that some of the artists are here present, Noel is here, Steve, welcome, Crystal, welcome, and Helen, I don't have Helen, you're welcome. And I suppose I, and I spent, I, I, I had the beauty in, uh, of, of, of the privilege of spending a, a kind of 25 minutes here on my own walking through and seeing the various different layers and the various subtleties. And so the beauty of walking through, through this exhibition is that, uh, you know, you can do it at a glance and then you find you have to, you're drawn in and drawn in and on drawn into various, and I love the way that some, some of, the, uh, of the artists, uh, there's a kind of a contradiction perhaps between the title uh, of the work and, what, uh, and, uh, and what's in it, and sometimes it's, it's supporting. But I love also the installation that Crystal and Newell put together, the layers and layers and layers of various ideas, dreams, uh, some of Yeats' dreams, some of their own dreams, but all, and, and the fact that then that's, that's they're imposed on that is a video which was made in Paris, I believe, in France, I believe, it was a shot. Bits of it. So the idea that Yeats would have loved all this, I mean, uh, I would have loved the confluence and the kind of the contrast of various media, various ideas uh, uh, coming together. Uh, I do like the playfulness of Helen O'Leary's work as well, uh, particularly the piece right behind you here, uh, what's it called? Unfortunate Agreements, which is a wonderful kind of example of the tension that goes on there. And uh, you know, that at one point, you know, is it an agreement? Is it a, is, 
an unfortunate reason of what, what that journey might, might, might bring us. But I don't want to pick a, a, a different piece out, but just to say that I want to congratulate the artists, because really for me it's something that was well worth a trip down uh, from Dublin to see it and to, to, to celebrate it. And uh, I want to finish off really just by, by um, quoting, literally quoting some of the statement of the installation, uh, because really uh, in my job and my role, uh, which is what I inherited from Yates, is that my job is to mediate the work of the artist to the audience, but ultimately it's the artist who speaks louder than any, any curator or, or any producer. But I'll just read a little section of the, art, of the statement because it is lovely. The difference between awake and asleep is, is the weight and opacity of gossamer. A perceived veil, perhaps imaginary, perhaps imaginary. It is there that our curiosity ventures. We wait, we see, and we gather. Then we wake from a dream, dream while awake, fall asleep both to dream and to wake up. I am proud to announce and open this exhibition and celebrate it. <laughs>